Chapter 12 Explanation of Gravity and the Electromagnetic Phenomenon Through Our Single Field Theory Compared to the form G, which by the way gives us the link or the geometric coefficient of our similarity functions, the only ones that exist according to us within the form of corporality of isolated spaces, we can now enter in a more intimate study about the three-dimensional continuum in which gravitational fields are contained. A more intimate study than has usually been done until now. For the mathematical philosopher, not for the grotesque eye of the one who understands everything within the sensible field of ordinary physics, the corporal relativity of the pure spaces of which we have spoken is independent of our will, of our thought, and of our ideology, because in truth our aforementioned functions of similarity entail a geometric necessity as the ontological reason in which an entire functional order is contained. It is, in a word, the a priori function. The cosmic reality recognized by the mathematically conscious spirit and reason of the geometric truth as the intrinsic form of natural reality in all its manifestations. That, in the end, there's no matter that can be invested but infused into itself as into its own way of being. The form, the geometry, then does not exist like the reality of space, but as the manifestation of substance in the very moment of its determination. That instant is always the moment of a preserved change in the said intrinsic form. It is the act preserved in its form as the present with which the substance is characterized in the norm of its time. A Euclidean field, for this reason, implies an absolute decline of sensible concretion and gives us the ideological measure. It is natural of the last change in its moment, as if it were a resolution of the, indef of the, in of the infinitely small density to non-time. Since within that continuum, the rhythm would be infinite, and this implies a narrowness of time equal to zero. The Euclid, then, lacks space. It has no sensible form, and it exists only as the force that opposes non-being in the infinite resolution of nothingness. It is the positive tendency of space, counteracted by the cosmic push of an infinitely remote an infinitely large mass, which is also contained as a resistance to the non-being of the space in the intangible, of space in the intangible, in the formless, in the immeasurable of absolute time marked by the cessation of rhythm. What a beautiful truth and how well it satisfies the most ancient spirit. Each intrinsic form of the substance represents a moment of space normalized that by which that, that by the time that can that by the time that contains it. Time is therefore the continuous expression of that instant by which the substance is conserved within the same state, intrinsically and specifically particularized by the geometric form that gives it being. Therefore, the absolute instant contained by time of the same kind is the infinite mass of non-dimension. It has no form. He only represents the beginning and the end of the substance as a fact contained in that mathematical function that has the capacity for the absolute. This function fortunately exists. It is the same one that is ordinarily used, but now applied by us, no longer as a function of effect but as a derivative in which time is a variable that generates the geometric form that gives being to the substance. From all this it follows that Euclidean time and space, the two absolute factors with which thought sometimes indulges in the enjoyment of the unknowable, only gives us the measure and the reason of the limitless as the end of the form in the supreme act of a substantial fading. It is a supreme moment, we repeat, by which the very principle of substance is regenerated. 
This already suggests the idea of a return to the finite from that divine moment. It is a magnificent return that must necessarily be accomplished through the same route of egress. And there, with all the magnificence of a great mystery, caught red-handed, is the cause par excellence of both thrust, the centripetal, and the centrifugal, with which universal gravitation is characterized. This is also, incidentally, the cause that has led to the unforgivable error of the electromagnetic theory. Those two thrusts, as we will see later in the subsequent chapters, simply, simply constitute two tendencies that come to collide with each other through cosmic matter, through action and reaction from both infinities, the positive and the negative. That is, two tendencies engendered by the regeneration of the form at the very moment of its end, in the elliptical moment par excellence as a derivative of the absolute. It is a magnificent moment whose portrait is not, cannot be, given that the elliptical projective is, in the infinite term, the pure spherical. The whale integral, a math problem I don't know how to read. It cannot, above all, because the infinite spherical it cannot be above all because the infinite spherical does not collide with the elliptical of the same order. Nor do these geometric shapes collide in the infinitely small term. With this, what is necessary remains in place. The relativistic incompatibility between the extremes and the intermediate elliptical space. But since these extremes are relatives of the same geometric species, between them there exists by necessity that cosmic unevenness of similar times as two spatial tendencies, the centripetal and the centrifugal as a static compression through the elliptical field. They represent purely those spherical moments, the difference of times in between the real extremes of the elliptical universe manifested the said difference throughout the entire field in the effect of a static equilibrium by which the historical difference of the, intra of the intracosmic in the measurement of acceleration as a static content of gravitation manifested by means of test instruments as an impulse current. In effect, that time difference necessarily behaves like a potential difference conserved in the measurement of two constant forces throughout all cosmic matter. At each point then of the continuous universe, an excess of inertia is verified as the historical difference of a process of reactions sustained by an equilibrium of identity of times and at, and at, at each of the points of the aforementioned unlimited continuity. This difference is without a doubt the static acceleration of, in the apparent and only apparent measure of an infinite flow, but really fulfilled in its intensity under the auspices of Newton's universal law, gravity, not gravitation. As can be seen, all this entails in its pure and true place, the intimate nature, the cosmic process of continuous reality, which by the way could not be explained by electromagnetic theory, but by means of a function of effect generated by the quantity E in measurement of a constant electrical charge whose density varies throughout the space that contains it. It cannot be ensured without this obeying some whim or necessity that the attraction between the source of negative electricity and its magnetic field is, rec is realized punctually across all the surfaces of real space. Such a proposition would be absurd since there is not a single point of the field or of the space it covers that does not have to respond to the general architecture of the theory. That is, that it will always have to exist for the intimate dynamics of the electromagnetic attraction, the indispensable subject, the said negative electricity, as the immediate cause of the necessary magnetic field. For each point of the spherical surface where the constant E is contained, 
uh, its highest electron electron density. For example, there will have to happen as we think, according to this theory, an amount of negative electricity equal to e divided by 4 pi and a square continuously and as if by intra-electronic impulse let us say it that way because otherwise it wouldn't be explained the constant quality e in its numerical content of electrostatic units would necessarily explode no doubt forcefully by its own repulsive nature but this explosion fortunately for the said theory is not lost like a crash in the real space that the doctrine assumes because in truth the magnetic field that is simultaneous with it serves as a break and naturally the phenomenon is carried out with the alternative that science sets for it the electron then continually which seems incredible is charged and discharged at every instant by that natural law of electromagnetic transformation proclaimed by the same theory always then it will have to go out at the same time as it enters for the intra-electronic regeneration affects the same amount e divided by 4 pi a square per square unit of spherical surface for all this it follows when the absurdity of the specific measurement of the radius has been realized the incompatibility of understanding and reason within the same rational capacity, the ideal point and the architectural complexity of an entire physical materiality. It means, and the same theory agrees on this, that an electromagnetic field is a granular content. In a similar field, each corpuscle of its granulation and dispensely has to be a gravitational center because each sensitive point of it means a cosmic window open to the continuous exchange of electrical energy into field energy and reciprocally or rather if you want said sensitive point represents a corpuscle of electronic origin in which the density is always e divided by v square it's clear that each energetic concretion of these represent in itself, as we've said, a center of attraction. The effect of all this within the gravitational simultaneity that the spirit contemplates in this painting is evident, a passive state or without any dynamic result for the space seized by electromagnetic propagation. On the other hand, it is impossible, scientific reason and conscience refuse to believe it as long as one wants to agree with the aforementioned theory that the mass or the intra-electronic state of the space occupied by radius A has not been produced by the same propagation process. The thing is that within these narrow limits the energy density is greater and the exchange process of electromagnetic transformation are very slow but with an extreme slowness, so extremely and so narrow, that it can be taken as a continuous matter. It is that the principle of the quantity constant E as a purely electrostatic content of the radius A of the electron is apparent. In fact, an electron, when it emerges from the cathodic, cathodic depths, represents a state of propagation as the initial moment of another broader one that will develop into the space. When studying energy, as physicists study it, instantly, since it is not possible to study it in any other way, the electron represents, since at this moment the passive state has not yet been satisfied, a centrifugal thrust. Naturally, without centripetal reaction, which behaves in the measurement of an electrical tension corresponding to the charge study, studied and which responds to the density E divided by A square. The passive state or without any dynamic resultant which we have shown for the propagated electromagnetic fields in free space is incompatible with 
the centripetal static acceleration of gravitation through the cosmic infinite. Our thought of continuous quantity of the intrinsic form of substance as a reality of space and the function of time that engenders it therefore prevails and is more efficient than the electromagnetic theory for all gravitational purposes. And it is also because of them that the spirit understands the true intimate nature of all manifest manifested physical materiality. We've already shown that there is a material order, independent of our will and thought, insofar as a functional train of space-time forms an ad infinitum, that is, of similar forms within this infinite variety. A change of nature, any chemical aspect, the difference between two atoms, for example, implies a substantial change in the measure of an intrinsic transformation sustained by the act of the expression of the time in which is contained. Time is, for all this, so perfectly intelligible, not the sustained moment, but the capacity of the act. Therefore, a change in time entails a substantial change in the measurement of the geometric transformation of space as its intrinsic form. If the great Pythagoras, question mark, just as he was the philosopher who has most greatly satisfied humanity of all times and places, had also been a spirit of greater mathematical height. His philosophy, which only reached the form of the great mysteries in which nature is contained, would have triumphed through the intimate essence of the substantial form, as the expression of an act contained in the capacity of its time. And that is, it clearly emerges as a light of the great arcanum. What I have come to do in this work, this work on the other hand, is not only helped by Aristotelian thought, but is also supported by the whale integral and Maxwell's differential equations. Whale, a frankly philosophical spirit, spirit but with the vigor that is only comparable to that of his prologue writers, Cabrera in Spain, cannot strip himself away to get rid of the principle or idea of an unlimited continuity by use of the integral with an infinite limit. His reason and conscience as a mathematical philosopher would not have allowed him. He cannot, in he cannot enclose the great philosopher could not conceive it like this. In a similar way, the heterogeneous principle of granular, granular fields. His reason as a wise man and philosopher, no matter how much he was obliged or in some way compromised to the electromagnetic theory, could not submit so absolutely to it. And then, due to the need for a field that had no solution of any kind, accepts the currents of energy as if each ideal point of space of the spherical surfaces that are developing in the infinite propagation of the fields had the cosmic capacity to give them a pass because in truth the expression 3 divided by 4 pi v cubed times 1 e squared divided by 2 v to the fourth from which the derivative of the integral is derived as the total energy of the field what does it mean? That it's an integral of the space completely occupied by the field and never of an infinite space strewn with electromagnetic particles as an infinite space theory obliges us to believe. This would be absurd because, in truth, a heterogeneous matter made up of different units is not susceptible to limited integration. The problem is solved by Whale very beautifully. It accepts that the mass of the entire field between A and the infinite rests on the electromagnet on the electronic mass and as and as if it were contained by a complete filling of the space it occupies. That is, as can be seen, space is a function of MC square, and this represents it, as is obvious by a centrifugal tension through all the points of the volume. 3 times 3 divided 4 divided by 3 pi a cubed. With this then, the principle of continuity is resolved in some way. 
This also imposes the continuous state in the state in the space open to the infinite, which is in truth the only thing that can give virtuality to the aforementioned integration. As we understand, the genius of will wanted it. But from the point of view of the electromagnetic constitution, that is, as we've already demonstrated, an absurdity of all absurdities, it is that, let it be said again, each point in the field has the same electronic behavior. What we have written is enough and is sufficient to understand that whale proceeds within the idea of a continuous field incompatible with electromagnetic theory. That is why we have said above that our thinking is sustained by the referred integral. Maxwell's equation are also quite appropriate with this as long as it is assumed within the narrow limits or without any infinite pretensions of the field.